Hey Bailey, it's Dr. Scott. I have some feedback for you on your SA2 draft. And just as a reminder, in this assignment, I'm taking a close look at your ability to write a thesis statement that's got a good argument in it, that's a, that's a focused thesis statement, it's clear. I'm also looking at how you uh, support that thesis statement with details from the mural, or the murals, and uh, research that you might have found in the couple sources that I provided you. I'm also looking at organization and transitions, and organization is not just like getting ideas grouped together or similar ideas grouped together. It's also, um, are you, you know, is there a reason for why you begin with one paragraph and then go on to another paragraph? And uh, that you're using transitions between those paragraphs uh, to help us understand how things are connected. I'm also taking a look at your ability to integrate some sources. So I'm going to go through and talk through uh, my comments. And my comments are just like little... Um, snippets to me, just reminders um, uh, to myself of things to talk to you about. So in the introduction, it's a uh, pretty standard introduction. It's fine, I guess. Um, I did think that the Transparent Indian, I'm not sure if that's the actual title of that mural. Um, yeah, I think it's like the Settling of Portsmouth. You might refer to it as that. As that. It's not that big a deal. I do think, um, I, I kind of like the, the thesis statement that it's got a, uh, a pretty clear argument to it. And, you know, you're kind of critiquing the murals, and I think that that's interesting, and I think that's good. I think a lot of folks tend to write that, you know, Dafford does this amazing job of whatever, and uh, you're saying, eh, you know what, there's this issue where he's not really doing that good of a job. So it's interesting, and I like it. I think this sentence here, um, I think you can lose sentences like that, like the first item that I would like to discuss. Um, I think that that's, that's maybe a little bit more high schooler stuff. I think you can leave that aside. There should be a reason why you're beginning with color, though, and it's not very clear. This sentence doesn't clarify it. It just tells me that you'd like to talk about it. It doesn't explain, like here, um, it doesn't explain why color is going to be the first thing that you're going to discuss. It might be because color is what stands out the most or it's the most effective or it's the most um, troubling, or it's the um, it's the tactic that gets it the most wrong, gets the history most wrong. So there's a number of different ways you can go about it, but this doesn't really kind of explain the rationale of why you're beginning with color. You do have a you do a solid job of keeping you know the paragraph focused on that particular issue, and overall, I think that this is a better draft than your first essay draft. Um, there were places here and in the next body paragraph where I wanted you to kind of connect your details to the overall thesis statement or the overall argument that you're trying to make in the paragraph. So if you're trying to say that color is one of the ways that uh, the murals are a bit misleading about the history, you need to kind of explain that. And um, so here you end this, in the discussion about the, uh, this, I think it's the 1749 mural, these bright and vibrant colors help us depict the mood as happy and enjoyable at the time. And then, without even kind of talking about that, you're into talking about the transparent um, Indian mural. I think there's some discussion that needs to happen here that explains, all right, here's what's, here's the problem with that. And just so you know, this is, um, these aren't pilgrims here. This is a French settler, um, and he actually got a name. Like, if you research this image, it's Dafford painting... Um, a mural of a painting, a pretty famous painting that depicts the settling of, of this area uh, by French would-be colonists. And so they're talking to the Shawnee, and I believe that these are um, English um, settlers that are already in the region. These are French that are coming by to try to claim the land. So uh, there's some discussion that needs to happen after these details. You do a solid job of um, describing you know, what's going on in the murals, and that's great. The next step is to provide some explanation that, that connects these details to your paper's overall argument. Um, it, I guess the, something to think about as well is, like, they, they, get the, they get the colors wrong in different ways. Like, this is, like, a really vibrant, it seems really positive. Like, we're not seeing just how kind of devastating this is going to be for Native Americans in the area. Um, and that is kind of, it's pretty different from this. Like, this isn't, like, vibrant, everything's really positive. It's just, it's got this very faint reminder that this is land that was taken from 
Native Americans, and we're all about settling now. And then I think after this mural, we don't see Native Americans um, ever again in the murals. So I think the the murals are doing di different things with color, um, but in your in this paragraph, you're kind of treating them as if they're both the same. Um, I think the the first sentence in the second body paragraph it could hint at how the how this paragraph is going to relate to the paper's overall argument. So, body language of the characters can be used to tell the emotions and the mood of that character. You could use that for any for any paper that you write, um, but you're writing a paper that's got a specific argument. So, you need to give us a sentence that kind of connects what you're doing in that um, in that paragraph to the paper's overall argument. Um, I would get in there and maybe provide you an example or something like that, um, but this is a PDF, so I'm not able to kind of get in there and, and edit it. But if you want to chat about how you might be able to do that, let me know and we can do that. Um, yeah, I have a note in here that doing a little bit of research about that image is going to help you figure out that he's not really a pilgrim, like he's not a um, he's not a, a British or English settler or colonizer. He's actually French. I think you can tell that because these little images up here, these are Florida leaves, which are a symbol of France. Do a little bit of research about that image, I think is going to help you out. Um, so I'm, and I realize I've said that a few times, the word thing in this pot, in this uh, screencast. I have a, in writing, I have kind of a pet peeve about that, especially in an essay where I'm asking you to describe. Using the word thing is probably the least descriptive word in the English language, and you can just kind of cut it out of your writing altogether. There's usually 99.9% um, .9 of the time there's a better alternative than the word thing uh, for something you're trying to describe, for an object you're trying to describe. Here, um, the facial expression argument is a bit weaker than the other two. There's a lot less detail. Uh, there's very little connection to the overall argument. And then it, here, You've got a quote, a quote, but you're ending a paragraph with it, which is one of Sedman's annoyances. So there's a lot of work to, to happen in the facial expression art um, paragraph. It didn't feel like, yeah, this. I mean, this was the weak link of the essay. It was really difficult to understand how this was related to the overall. It felt like a weak um, support of the, the paper's overall argument. Um, and so you have, again, like you have details here, and you do this in other paragraphs, but you have details here, and you're not kind of explaining how it relates to the paper's overall claim. That needs to happen um, here and elsewhere. But I would also add that here, like, the detail is, it, it, it's a bit thinner than your other paragraphs. Okay. Um, then I think I mentioned the ending paragraph of the source. I've also got a fair bit of work to do with, in a, you know, with the uh, works cited page. But it's a draft. So that's that's my feedback. The big issue to fix, um, make sure that you are um, explaining your details, connecting them to your over, your paper's overall argument. Figure out what you're going to be doing with that facial expression argument, um, the facial expression paragraph. Um, make sure that uh, you're not ending paragraph with a quote, that you're integrating sources into your paper. But the big issue is the explaining details in a way that supports your argument. You got some, um, some factual issues to kind of correct with the, with the history, but um, again, I said it before, this is a really solid draft, Bailey, so you should be proud. Um, ask me some questions next week. Let's make sure that you get this, uh, this um, essay squared away, and um, looking forward to seeing what you do with this. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you soon.